Caves have always held a special place for man. Some of the earliest art and storytelling are found there. In South Africa, these covered dwellings were used to record mysterious medical treatments, while in other parts of the world, they were a testament to the daily life in the hunt. No matter the message, caves had a sacred role for man. Maybe because they were the first safe haven or shelter, or maybe because in their essence, caves are mysterious, dark, and often seemingly never-ending entrances to another world. More modern writers like Mark Twain to Jules Verne use caverns as a metaphor and a passage to another realm or for nurturing the human experience. The great Eastern religions of Buddhism and Hinduism are no different. In two collections of hollowed out rock ledges in India are the most fabulously decorated and significant Hindu and Buddhist caves in the world. It was here one religion superseded another, yet Unlike most times where a faith is supplanted, the old religion here was not destroyed and replaced by the new, but worshiped and existed side by side. So join me this week as we explore the great caves of Ajanta and Elora. Namaste, I'm Bill Ball, and I'm going to be your guide on this episode of Journeys in India. And this is India. When Mark Twain traveled through India at the turn of the 19th century, he wrote that India is the cradle of the human race, the birthplace of human speech, the mother of history, the grandmother of legend, the great grandmother of tradition our most valuable and most instructive materials in history are treasured up in India only. Join us each week as we explore the entire Indian subcontinent, from Kerala in the south to the Himalayas in the north and all points in between. We'll introduce you to the architecture, history, and culture of one of the most exotic, mysterious, and influential places on Earth. Journeys in India. The caves of Ajanta and Ellora, about 100 miles north of the city of Aurangabad, on the east coast of India. The most famous nearby city is Mumbai, or Bombay, which is an international gateway city with a modern airport and a number of attractions in its own right. From Mumbai or Delhi, the other gateway city in India, it is a relatively short flight to Aurangabad. The temptation might be to head directly to the UNESCO site caves, but don't. Aurangabad is worth a day or two of your time. The city dates back to 1610 when it was established as a commercial, political, and military outpost inland from the west coast of India. In fact, it contains the tomb of one of the most important figures in India's history, Aurangzeb, the son of the builder of the Taj Mahal. Aurangzeb was an ambitious boy, stuck in the middle of three brothers. Now what's a power-seeking middle child to do? Kill your siblings, of course. After dispatching his brothers, he turned his attention to his father, Shah Jahan. Shah Jahan was already a legend, having built the Taj Mahal as a mausoleum for his favorite wife, Mumtaj, as well as beautiful palaces, mosques, and magnificent forts. Aurangzeb did not want to wait for his turn to rule. He wanted it now. In a daring military move, he defeats his father and locks him in the Agra fort overlooking his beloved Taj Mahal. Seven years later, Shah Johan is buried there beside his much-loved Mumtaz. Aurangzeb did not like the over-the-top flourishes of his father. He felt it was an insult to Islam, so he decided that he would have a much simpler grave and this is the result. Upon entering Arangabad, one of the most shocking sights awaits you. 
I haven't left Aurangabad and magically appeared in Agra. It's not an optical illusion, though. What you're seeing behind me is built by another family member in another city. The real Taj Mahal is some 700 miles away, and yet this smaller version was built in 1661 by Aurangzeb's son, Prince Azam Shah, for his mother. Now there's an afterlife conversation I'd like to hear. This Taj is about 50% of the size of the original, and unlike the original, only the bottom three feet is made of marble. The rest is plaster. This poor man's Taj Mahal costs 45 times less. A closer inspection reveals that the Aurangabad version is not an exact copy of the more famous and larger mausoleum, but the inspiration is unmistakable.